to be here with you today on this beautiful Palm Sunday. We've got snow falling outside, but we are celebrating together here. And I just want to invite all the kids, young at heart, all, everyone, let's just come up to the front today. We're going to have our youth band leading worship today. Woo. My son, Jaden, on the piano. We've got Wes. Let's just join together and bring our praise to the Lord. Amen. So come on, let's fill the front here. Okay. And I'll just say a little prayer. Lord, we just come before your throne to honor you, Lord. We are so blessed to be able to be in your house today, to be together, Lord. And Father, we just, we lay everything down at your feet. We lay all our worries we cast them aside, and we just focus on you today, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to lift your name up, that name that is above every other name. Lord, we just come to worship you with all our hearts, with all our mind, with all of our being, Lord. Be exalted today in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ready, guys? All right. One, two, one, two, three, four. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hey, you know, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is such as these. Let the children come unto me, he said. You know, there's something special about what he's saying there. And it is that a child comes full of faith. They believe. And I just want to declare that we have experienced the power of God through these young ones. Brian Whitmer gave a testimony just a few months back of a miracle that occurred in his life because of the prayer of these young ones on him. I've had two healings because of the prayer of these young ones in the last year. And so I just want to say as we go back into worship, come on up. We'll have the young ones pray for you and you can experience their faith because they come knowing that God is able. And today
Amen. <sighs> May I have your seats. Now, I know it's family service, but we still have some announcements to make. Because <laughs> what would a church service be about without some sort of announcement? So thank you for being here, even in the midst of this little bit of snow we have. Um, it's making a mess out there. <clears throat> Um, if you'd like to give, you're welcome to give in the back. We have a box or you can give online. We also have baptism classes that are going. Those are happening on Sunday evenings. If you're interested, you can still sign up at Church Center. Um, this week, we have our life groups happening. We have prayer in the chapel th Tuesday morning at 630. Celebrate recovery Tuesday evening. Wednesday night, we have our junior high and high school youth groups happening. We also have Engage, which is our Wednesday night fellowship, and um, we break open the word, and we talk about all sorts of awesome stuff. We get to fellowship and worship together. That's in the fellowship hall. Um, in Not this week, but the following week, so April 3rd, you guys aren't going to want to miss it. Um, Liz and Joe are going to be sharing about their trip in Greece at our Engage service uh, evening. So mark your calendars, 7 o'clock, April 3rd. We get to hear all of the amazing stories and the amazing testimonies of what God's doing in Greece. Um, we also have a prayer meeting that meets on Friday nights in the shepherd at the shepherd's house in Sonora. Um, we have an orchard crew scheduled for next Saturday. Hopefully we won't get snowed out of that one too. Um, but next week is Easter. This is like the really important thing. Next week is Easter where we celebrate the reason that we are Christians, the resurrection of Christ. And it is such an opportunity to bring people to the house of God that maybe wouldn't come in any other time. So we would like you to invite people to come to our Easter service. We're actually going to be providing lunch for everybody. So invite them to come. If we're to life, if you'd be kind enough to register for us so we could get a, at least a rough count. Um, but we will be having lots of extras so we can bring all of our guests with us to, to share a meal with everybody and to really bring the heart of Christ, which was relationship. Amen. And full restoration of family and relationship. So please invite people. And like I said, please sign up um, for the meal. You can see that. At, we'll send out another email, but you should be able to sign up on our events page um, at wordoflifeca.com or church center app. Um, we also could use about 10 helpers to volunteer to help with that. So if you could see Rosie if you're willing to help Saturday or Sunday. So we could use about 10 additional volunteers for that. We also have our Voice of God prophetic seminar happening um, April 25th through 27th, and it is filling up fast. So please get signed up, share it with your friends. With that, I would like to um, ask Jaden Lucidge to share a song with us today. How's everybody doing today so far? So this song I'm about to play, I wrote with a little help from my mom, but God just put this song on my heart to share with you guys today, so hope you guys like it. You are God's child, he'll never leave forsake you you are loved so don't believe the lies against you and don't forget he's right beside you all throughout your life and when you're sad or you're mad or you can't do it by yourself he's right there for you Cause you're not on your own Cause you're not on your own And as time flies by and we walk in faith We'll be faced with temptation So praise God and give Him the glory And you'll be helped even more So don't forget He's right beside you all throughout your life And when you're sad or you're mad or you can't do it by yourself He's right 
right there for you Cause you're not on your own Cause you're not on your own All right, whose kid is that? <laughs> yeah, it's like I look at him, I'm like, he's got nice hair, nice voice, not mine. Um, all right, Samuel Company Kids, come up front. Samuel Company Kids, come up front. So what we're gonna do every week in Samuel Company we go over our memory verse. Down there, down there, down there, down there. So we go over a memory verse. This year, we're going over a big memory verse. Right, guys? What's the memory verse? Psalm 91. Psalm 91. The whole chapter. All right, you guys can take a seat. All right, so every week, we kind of introduce different things, okay? So to help us, some of these words are really big in this chapter. And so if we can get maybe the uh, verse to pop up, that way we all know what we're talking about. So Psalm 91.1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall... Uh, uh, okay, so we kind of got it. All right, so I need some... So here's our Samuel Company core team. They're going to come up and help. So shall let me come up first. So this part here. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. So shall let me here is a shadow, right? So how do, we, how do we be under the shadow? What's the key here? We have to be kind of close, right? Kind of, if I'm over here, I'm not under the shadow. But if we're here, we're under the shadow, right? All right. So next verse. Let's go over the next verse. Let's all say it together, everybody. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Okay, pause, 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 pause. Snare of the fowler. Okay, everybody, do we know what a fowler is? It's a hunter, right? So Frenchie here. He's a hunter, okay, and he lets, he puts snares down, okay, and he tries to hunt for, what are you hunting for? Wabbit. Oh, wabbit. Do we have to, what do we have to be to hunt rabbit? You have to be very, very quiet. Oh, very, very quiet, because we're hunting a wabbit. Hunting a wabbit, okay. So, the snare of the fowler. Okay, now, the next part of this verse, it's... it's kind of crazy. It's a big word. Do you guys remember what this big word is? Perilous pestilence. Okay, perilous pestilence, come on out. I be perilous pestilence, most feared pirate of the seven seas. All right. Do you guys remember perilous pestilence? Perilous I was perilous pestilence a few weeks ago, and I made some kids cry, actually. <laughs> a little too perilous. So, 
We've adapted and we have Miss Jerusha as Perilous Pestilence today. It was a little too scary. So, now the, the next one. Let's go to the next one. All right, next one is He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings. Okay, freeze, freeze. So, Jenny here is going to be God. Last week it was G. G was very beautiful in his wings. This week, we have Miss Jenny. So, um, let's see, uh, Dante, come on up here. How would you, how would you get, take refuge under God's wings? Just like that. See that? All right. Thank you, Dante. All right. So, we're going to take refuge under his wings. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. All right, so shield and buckler. We actually learned about this a couple weeks ago with Miss Jerusha preaching, okay? The shield, you can take refuge behind it, and actually the buckler, that's for going on the offensive, right? You have this thing kind of to hit the enemy. All right, I'm not the enemy. Actually, Pastor John was the enemy in that skit. <laughs> all right, so let's all do this one more time together. And if you can, try to do it without reading. All right, so from the top, Psalm 91.1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Almighty, oh, shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress in trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence that shall you with those and under his wings shall lie refuge. Truth shall be your shield and buckler. Okay. I, I faded out there because I was messing up so much. All right. Do we know how important it is to memorize scripture? Church, Samuel Company. Because if you know who you are, do you know who you are as a Christian or as a child of God? Because that's the most important thing. Because when you know that, then Satan can't lie to you and tell you otherwise, okay? That is why it is so important for us to keep his scripture written on our heart to keep it because if it's not there then you're not going to have it for when you need it right when satan is trying to tempt you and tell you lies okay you say wait wait no 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 i know my scriptures all right so with that let's have you guys stay up here let's give a big round of applause to the sam co team thank you guys you just dropped your line All right, so with that, we're actually, I'm going to introduce our speaker today, who is also on the SAMCO team, Mr. Gadiel Dimate, who is uh, one of our wonderful, talented teachers. He's uh, in charge of the third through fifth grade class, I Explore. Yeah, everybody, all the kids are going to grab a palm branch. Okay. Uh, you guys know what day it is today, kids? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. You guys, uh, our junior church children are highly educated individuals in the word of God. And I don't even have to tell them what to do because they already know this story. So I do need Nick to come up. Nick, come on up here. Here, Nick, you got to put, put on this costume. Nick, and I need... Gaetano is going to come up. We're going to act out the Palm Sunday scene right here, guys. All right, can you guys ad-lib this? Okay, you guys are the crowd. Do you guys remember what the crowd yells on Palm Sunday? Okay. Hosanna. What else? What else? Do they play their palm tree. What else are they going to yell? Did they just yell Hosanna? Blessed is the one, the King of Kings. Blessed is the one who comes, right? 
All right, so we're going to do it. Ready? Here we go. We got to wait on the donkey here. <laughs> okay, let's, let's split. While he's, while he's setting up, let's split the, split the sea of palms here. Hadassah and uh, that's, uh, you guys split. Not Hadassah. You guys split. Ellie, split. And you guys split over there. Because this is where Jesus is coming down. Look at this. What's, what's going on? What do I do with this? Okay. All right. We got, this is the Mount of Olives. See the olives, you guys? Mount of Olives. Jesus is coming down. All right. Donkey, let's go. Get ready. Here we go. And action. Let's see it. Kids, what are you yelling? What are you yelling? Come on. I can't hear you, kids. Come on. Let's go. Here we go. Down from the Mount of Olives. Everybody's worshiping Jesus. Say, he, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Cut, 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 cut. All right. Let's, let's reset. Let's reset from the top. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jesus just ate it. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, everyone. All right, everybody. Take a, take a pill for just a second. Okay. Crowd, you did awesome. Jesus, you did awesome. Donkey, we got some work to do on this scene, okay? Donkey, listen, this is your moment. You have never been ridden before, and the first person that's riding you is the king of kings. And I need you to act like you are carrying the king of kings, all right? Donkey, you know your motivation? You have it? You have it? All right. Ready? And action. Let's do it again. Here we go. There we go. Much better. There we go. There we go. Down from the good. Down from the bounce of olives. The donkey is... Yeah, big day for the donkey. Big day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cut, cut, cut. All right. You guys did perfect. Again, I want you to do that same thing. You know, donkey, we got to work on this. Come here. Come here. Everybody else take, take five. Okay. Donkey, listen. All right. I don't think you understand the magnitude of this scene we're working here. All right. This is key part of the movie. Key part of the movie. Jesus is coming to town as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And you, your job is to get him there. Okay. okay? okay. You got you to gotta act like you are just, you are really important here. All right. Let's do it again. All right. Are you ready? Can you do this for me? All right. One more time. All right. Here we go. And action. Let's go. Yes. Yes, I love it. Yes, the donkey bringing Jesus to town, down from the Mount of Olives. Good, perfect, yes, and that's a wrap. We got it. Good job, donkey. We really made it at the end there. Good job. Okay, everybody put the, put the palms back in the buckets. Put the palms back in the buckets. Okay, mic check. Okay, that's enough. Uh, that's enough. <laughs> Thomas. Yeah, there we go. All right, go ahead and take the buckets for me. Clean up all these leaves and put it, take them to the side. All right, so kids, um, you can do whatever you want. You can stay up here and sit down, or you can go back to your seat, whatever you want to do. But my message for today is for the kids. Okay, my message for today is for the Samuel company that are with us today. All right, adults, you're welcome to stay. Okay, you're welcome to see if you can learn anything from this message that's for the kids. All right, but I wanted to focus on you guys because you're here today. So Thomas, have a seat. And yeah, Johnny, have a seat. All right, here we go. And Dante, you can go back to your, you can sit down here. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay, so here we go. Um, all right, what time is it? Okay, you guys, I'm excited to be here. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. So, my name is Gadiel, in case you didn't know. And there's a very special song that all the kids in the junior church and all the kids that I've ever taught in junior church know. And that's the song of how to spell my name. Okay. My mom wrote it so that I would remember how to spell my name. So who knows that song? Everybody raise your hand who knows the song? Okay. All right, we're all gonna sing it together so we learn how to spell my name. On your rocks, ready? One, two, three, go. 
G A T P I E L. That's how we spell Gadiel. Thank you guys. See that? Isn't that nice? My mom was a genius, you guys. That's how I have to sing it every time. All right. I'm at the age now where I like to talk about how long I've been doing things. Okay. Uh, I think old people like to do that because, like, you're like, well, at least I have something that I've been doing all these years. <laughs> I haven't been just sitting around doing nothing, right? I think that's why old people like to talk about that. So I've been teaching in the junior church for 30 years now. Okay. This junior church, the same one for 30 years. Um, I started when I was 10, and the reason why I started is because Miss Cindy told me to, okay? Um, I don't know if you were looking for something more spiritual than that, but then again, Miss Cindy's a pretty spiritual woman, (laughs) and if she told you to do something, you did it. (laughs) Could I get the podium brought over by somebody? Speaking of podiums being brought over, we're going to we're going to get we're going to um, end service early to get to the memorial service for Ian today. And I like to think that Ian would like this message. So I hope that uh, you do also. All right. So, like I said, kids, this message is for you. I have three things to tell you, and I got to turn on this thing and we can we can go with the slideshow. I have three things to tell you today. Are you listening? It's going to be really easy. It's going to be really quick. Don't worry. You guys, it's probably going to be quicker than uh, when I teach you guys in junior church. All right, I'm going to put this over here. Sorry, I wasn't clear on where I wanted that. Okay, three things I'm going to tell you. One is that Jesus loves you. Okay? Number two is that your faith is stronger and more powerful than an adult's faith. Okay? Okay? Now, I think that Jonathan, what do you mean what? You guys have just been running around praying for people. You didn't know that your faith was stronger than my faith? Well, I'm glad I'm telling you this. All right, number three thing I want to tell you is that you are never too young to make Jesus your king. Okay? You're never too young or too old to make Jesus your king. All right, so let's dive right into this here. Here we go. Number one was what? Jesus loves you. you. All right. To tell you about how much Jesus loves you, I will now read to you Romans. Whoops. A little delay here. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's a delay. All right, thank you. I got my pointer. Okay. Romans 8, 35 to 39 in the GAD version. G-A-D stands for Gadiel Anthony Dimite. Okay? You might not be able to find it in your Bible app. Are you ready for this, kids? All right, remember, this is a scripture that's all about how Jesus loves you. The love of Jesus Christ is bigger and greater and ginormous, sir, than anything you could ever imagine. Getting used to this here. If his love had a height, it would pierce the ceiling of the universe. If his love had a depth, it would swallow an entire ocean and still be thirsty. If your parents love you, Jesus loves you more. His love is stronger than Superman, Hulk, and Captain America combined. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, that's all right. Well, we lost, we lost Hulk and Captain America, but you get the picture, don't you? Nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Hawkeye's arrows can't do it. Thor's hammer can't do it. Not even Thanos' gauntlet can do it. No matter how many bad things you do, you can't make him stop loving you. And no matter how many good things you do, 
you can't make him love you anymore. That's because his love for you is already infinite. But how big is infinite, really? Google is a really big number. It's a one followed by 100 zeros, followed by 100 zeros. That's what a Google is. A Google Plex is an even bigger number. That's a one followed by a Google zeros. It's 10 to the power of a Google. But Jesus' love is bigger than a Googleplex times a Googleplex. That's a Googleplex squared, and it's called a Gar Googleplex. <laughs> it's equal to a Googleplex Googleplexes, and that's a number that's bigger than the amount of atoms in the entire universe. And that just goes to show that not even the universe that God created is big enough to contain the amount of love that he has for you. Okay? That's how much God loves you. And that, I can't even describe it. God loves you even more than I could possibly describe. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two is that your faith is greater than my faith. Your faith is greater than every single adult in here combined. I'm going over it again. I let you know what I'm going to say, and now I'm saying it, and then I'm going to say it one more time. Is that okay? Can you handle this, you guys? <laughs> All right. Don't worry. We're going to get through it together, you guys. I promise. Your faith is bigger than an adult's faith. Okay. I will, let's see. Yeah. I will now read to you Mark Chapter 10, verse 13 to 16, again in the GAD version. All right, here we go. Some people were bringing their kids to Jesus so he could pray for them. But the disciples told the kids and their parents to get lost, that Jesus was too busy for that. When Jesus saw this, it made him mad. And Jesus was all like, leave them alone and let the kids come to me. My kingdom belongs to kids. And then he was all like, bruh. <laughs> no one is allowed to enter my kingdom unless they believe like a kid believes. Who can tell me what Jesus is saying here? Like a little kid believes. There we go. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> what Jesus is saying here is that people like me can't even enter the kingdom of God. We can't even understand what Jesus is saying unless we act like you guys. You see, you guys, your whole lives are trying to do things the way adults do it, right? Yeah. You want to drive a car like an adult drives a car? Yeah. You want to operate a chainsaw like an adult operates a chainsaw? No? What do you want to do like an adult does? Nope. Nothing? Uh, Camille, what do you want to do that an adult does? Teach? You want to teach? All right, good for you. But Jesus is saying that adults need to do the exact opposite. We need to believe like you guys believe. That's how strong and powerful your faith is. That's why Jonathan asked you guys to come up and pray today. Because when you guys pray, it has more power than when I pray. And when Jonathan prays, and when anybody in here prays, that's what Jesus is saying here. All right? So when you get an ouchie, and your parent come and ask you if they can pray for you, you should say, don't worry, I have more faith than you. I'll pray for myself. <laughs> All right. Did I already, where is it? Next slide. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah. Uh, Nick and I decided to get a few of the kids together and pose for a picture. That's me right there. Up to the left, that's me. Nick has the uh, yellow head thingy on. That's Nick. Here, I'll just go right up here. This is Jaden right here. And this is Declan. This is Maverick. Okay. This is um, Ellie right here. <laughs> we, all, we all pose. George took the picture and he's really good at Photoshop. <laughs> 
Um, I was just looking for pictures on the internet. That was a weird one, but of Jesus with kids. These are some of them that I liked. That's just extra for you guys. Jesus had a special place in his heart for kids. And, you know, he really... Thomas, that's enough. <laughs> Jesus had a special place in his heart for kids. He wanted to be around them, and he wanted him, them to be around him. Thomas, go back down, please. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I know, just like junior church, buddy. I'll make you go sit with um, your mom. <laughs> All right. Jesus had a special place in his heart with kids, so I just had to find these and uh, show them to you guys. So the third thing that I want to tell you, kids, are you listening still? All right, we still have your attention, right? How about adults? Are you with me so far? All right, good. You're never too young to make Jesus your king. This is Palm Sunday when Jesus came into Jerusalem as the king. And there were all kinds of people yelling, Jesus, King Jesus is coming to town. All right? After, they were all yelling that because they had just heard that Jesus had raised somebody from the dead. And then, they came, and then he walked into town. So they thought, this must be the Messiah, the one we're waiting for. After he got, after all these people were doing their palm branches, worshiping him as their king, after that, he rode into town. He started performing miracle after miracle, okay? In Jerusalem, in front of everybody, he was doing these miracles. But John 12 tells us that there were three groups of people in Jerusalem, okay? There was one group of people who were skeptical, and they didn't believe that Jesus was king, Okay? There was a bunch of those people. Even though he was making, doing miracles, they still didn't believe. There was another group of people who believed, but they were too scared to say that they believed. They were afraid of what everybody, all of their friends were going to think of them. They were afraid of what would happen to them if they admitted that they believed in Jesus. Okay? Then there was a third group, the group of people who believed that Jesus was their king. It was a small group. Because they're jumping in, diving into the belief that Jesus is their king, saying, I'm going to take this leap of faith, and I'm going to believe that Jesus is my king, and I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to tell everybody that I believe. So, kids, my question to you is this. What group of people are you? You don't know. Are you the, raise your hand if you're the group of people who don't believe that Jesus is your king. All right, raise your hand if you're the group of people who don't believe. You're the people, oh no. We'll, we'll talk later, okay? <laughs> raise your hand if you're in the group that you believe, but you're too afraid to say that you believe. As an example. All right. Now, if you're in the third group of people who believe in Jesus and believe that, that he is your king, I want you to stand up. I want you to jump up and down, and I want you to say, Jesus is my king. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my king. One more time. Jesus is my king. King. Kids, when I was, good job, you guys. Kids, when I was your age, I can remember. I know that it seems weird for me to remember when I was your age, but I remember a day when I was in the junior church in the hallway, and for no reason at all, I said to myself, walking into church before church started, I was walking to my classroom, the same junior church that you guys go to junior church in, and I said to myself, you know what? I believe that Jesus loves me, and I believe that he's my king, and, I and I'm going to serve him for the rest of my life. That day, I made a decision. I was already saved. I was already filled with the Holy Spirit, but, that, but I hadn't really thought about it before, and I just... <laughs> Made a decision that day. <laughs> Praise Jesus. 
she's excited about it. Do you guys know that you're never too young to make that decision? Do you know that you can make that decision right now? We don't need any music to play. We don't need a preacher to make an altar call because it's a simple decision to just believe that you're in that third group of people, that you believe that it's a matter of taking your childlike faith, putting it in the love of Jesus, and if you do that, there's nothing left to do but to walk with Jesus for the rest of your life. Thomas, go ahead and sit down. John, you too, John. See, you gotta, you gotta nip that in the bud, otherwise they'll just take over, you guys. <laughs> So, to the adults, the challenge of this message, can you continue to walk with, your, walk with Jesus with childlike faith? Can you put aside all of your past experiences where Jesus or God seemingly lets you down, believe as a child believes in the unstoppable and unquenchable love of God? That's a decision that I need to make pretty frequently. And to the kids, can you take your powerhouse faith that's inside of you and believe and dive in head first to the love of God? If you can do that, stand up. Can you make the decision that you'll always walk with God? Let me hear you answer. Can you decide to believe? Do you decide to believe? Yes. All right. I can't promise you that this walk with Jesus is going to be easy, but I can promise you that that decision is the best decision you will ever make. Okay, Johnny? Okay, Gaetano? Okay, Emmett? Yeah. All right. Declan? Amen. Well done, Jonathan. Check. Check. There we are. Well done. Good good leap of faith there. All right, church. It's so good to be together. It's so good to have our families together. You know, the the energy that our children have, uh, sometimes we yearn for. But according to this message, that's something that God can bring you, okay? So uh, time to grab hold of some faith. Uh, we've got a lot uh, going on today, and, and so I know we had to brave weather today and all those things, but, um, you know, we're going to just close the service here in prayer, but I, I'm just so grateful for this Sam, Samuel Company team, and I, I just want to thank Gadiel. You know, all the work that he put into this to put on display, you know, just the, the, the tools and the extra bit of resources needed to teach our children and those sorts of things. That's what our, our Samuel Company teachers do, and they make sure to uh, provide for our kids just a great learning experience so that they can grow. But sometimes we need those tools too, so praise the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you for all that you're doing, God. I thank you for the challenge of our faith today, God, that we would let go, Lord, of, of just the, the difficult things to understand, Father God, and hold on to your word. Hold on to, Father, the work of your son. And God, I pray in Jesus' name that there would be a, a move from heaven, God, that continues to allow us to unite with your, your son and the work of the cross, Father. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, keep everyone safe, God, as, as they travel. Lord, we thank you for uh, all you're doing in this hour. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right. We're going to be transitioning here to a memorial that's going to be starting up at 1130. And so if, um, you know, you need to... Take care of a couple things. Now's the time, and we'll be setting up.